Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to do one problem on uh, confidence intervals for the difference in proportions. Um, so let's just get right to it. I said when asked where do you get your primary news from, a random sample of 100 adults showed that 48 of them said the newspaper, while independently a random sample of 100 teens showed that 19 of them said the newspaper. Construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval for the difference in proportion of adults and teens who get their primary news from the newspaper. So what I did first was I broke this down into two parts, adults and teens. I wrote X and N here. I know we never write X and N, but just because we're going to put in the calculator, I wanted you guys to know that X is the numerator, N is the denominator. We just typically say P hat 1 is 48 out of 100, P hat 2 is 19 out of 100. Also, you can say 1 minus P hat 2, which is Q hat 2, is going to be 81 out of 100. And you can say that this is going to be 52 out of 100, which is Q hat 2. Remember to define your parameters. Even for a confidence interval, you should define your parameters. So let P1 be the true proportion of adults who respond that they get their primary news from the newspaper, and then let P2 be the teens. Okay, just be very specific. It's a proportion. Okay, so we need to say that confidence intervals are conditions, formulas, interpretation. So I know we know how to write randomization, and I'm not going to write it, but basically the stem of the problem states that the sample of adults were chosen at random, and then independently, the random uh, sample of 100 teens were chosen. And it's important to be independent because let's just pretend it's a mother-daughter. If the mother reads the newspaper, it's probably more likely that the daughter will read the newspaper or get her news from the newspaper. So they gotta be independent. So that's your first thing, your randomization. Second, NP hat 1 and Q hat 1 and 2, P hat 2 and 2, Q hat 2, all of these have to be greater than 10, not 30. This is a proportion. N, 100, P hat 1, 48 out of 100. Remember, P hat is a fraction, so that's 48. 100, 52 out of 100, 52, and so on. Then you have to say, since all values are greater than or equal to 10, we can assume that distribution is approximately normal. Okay to proceed. So now step two is going to be the formula. So we know that for confidence interval, it's going to be statistics plus or minus critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. We know that it's going to be two samples. So you're going to look on your formula sheet, go down. It's going to say the difference of sample means or the difference of sample proportions. We know it's a proportion, difference of sample proportion. Now, no matter what, the critical value must be a Z for proportions. It's only T. Um, the only way that it could possibly be T if it's an average. So this gives you 1.96. Now, P hat, Q hat over N1, and the same thing for N2. Remember, on your formula sheet, it'll probably say 1 minus P hat 1. That's Q hat. Now, plug in your mechanics. 48 over 100 minus 19 over 100 plus or minus 1.96 times all of this stuff here. Remember, P hat is a fraction or a decimal. Once you set it up, stat, test, two sample, Z prop. So here we are, B, 48, 100, 19, 100, point 95, you fill it in. If you need to pause the video, then you do so and you plug in the numbers and make sure you know exactly where you're going. That's where your answer and what you wanna do is you wanna go back and put your answer somewhere down here, like right below the, um, right below the mechanics, okay? Cause that's still step two, okay? So, so, once you're done with step one, which is the conditions, step two, which is the formula, we're on to step three, which is the interpretation. Okay, how do we interpret this? First and foremost, all these numbers are positive. Second, two sample means two statements, okay? The first statement is going to be regular. So, we are... 99% confident, let me get rid of this, sorry. 
we are 95% confident. We are 95% confident that the true difference in proportion of adults and teens that get their news from the newspaper is between 0.1655 and 0.4145. In other words, we are 95% confident that between 17 and 41% more adults get their newspaper from the news their news from the newspaper than teens. So, I really want to talk to you guys about this here. Typically, we never use the word more for, um, for our statement. I'm just going to use it in this case here. We know that the answer is this to this. We know that if you were going to draw that, we know that uh, zero, remember we need a second statement, zero would be out here in like the rejection region, right? So if we did HO P1 equals P2 and HA P1 is greater than P2, well, we would say since zero is in the rejection region, we would reject HO. So the only way we could ever say it's greater than is we need to specify our alpha. If this is a 95% confidence interval, that means there's 0.025 left on each side. So if it's more than, it's a one-sided test. It's a right-sided test and it's a one-sided test. So you can only use one of these. If you just wanted to say, hey, there's a difference, then you would use 0.05. But if you wanna say more than, then you have to say um, 0.025. So I hope that makes sense a little bit. Um, I hope it makes sense actually perfectly, but I, uh, just need you to pause the video, take your time, read the comment. This is for this is our first statement and our second statement is since zero is not in the interval, there is a difference. But I prefer to say there's you know, there's more more adults uh, read the newspaper than teens. And so that's why I'm just going to change alpha from our typical 0.05 to 0.025 because more than means only choose one side. Um, there is a difference means you've got to use the total of these. Okay, so that's pretty much how we do it.